Welcome to my talk on distributed visualization of HPU central computations in Julia. I'm Samuel Lomin, computational scientist and responsible for Julia computing at the Swiss National Global Computing Center, ETH Zurich. My co authors are Lily Grass and Ivan Utkin, also from ETH Zurich. In supercomputing nowadays, people very often talk about the three P's performance, portability, productivity. More concretely, one can understand these three P's also as scalable performance, performance portability, and productivity. Now, there are many different views about to address these three P's, but one thing everybody agrees it is a big challenge. In this talk, we will present you one part of our solution to this challenge. More precisely, in order to do a, a large scale supercomputing, we have addressed the question loaded on the right here. And uh, in this talk, we will focus just on one thing distributed polarization. Um, but of course, we also need to answer the question what programming, programming languages we want to use. Now, it's Unicom, so of course, I colored the three P's in red, green, and violet in the color of Julia. And on the right, I will introduce our solution to the focus of the talk. And uh, using then the same color as on the left, I will show what each aspect of the solution address. All right, so which programming language or languages do we use? Of course, the language we choose itself should also contribute to addressing the three P's. And so we want to have, of course, a fast language, meaning a language allows to write fast code. Uh, so it should be an ahead of time compiled language or just ahead of time compiled language. Uh, an LLVM based compiler is certainly a great start to go from. Um, then for productivity, you want to have simple, high level, interactive, and low development cost. Now, I don't think we're good at hiding it for a second that we are talking, of course, about Julia. Then, how do we achieve an efficient distributed polarization? Of course, the solution must not only be efficient, but exactly address these three P's. And so, we need automatic distributed polarization of architecture and logic code, automatic for productivity, distributed polarization of uh, the performance part, the architecture of agnostic code for portability. The package implicit global grid does exactly that for central based applications. Now here you see a little summary of this introduction. I presented you already the three challenges you want to address in this talk. And now I'm going to present you a simple nonlinear glacier flow example, which I will use later to illustrate our solution to this challenge. And then I'll show how implicit global grid responds to this 3P challenge. And in the end, I will report the results and finish with conclusions. Q2 equation is the classic glacier flow, H is the glacier height, QH are fluxes, P is the topography, T is the gravity, and U is the viscosity. You can see that this is a nonlinear series. Here is the essential part of the code that allows us to simulate a glacier flow with the equations I just showed before. It uses implicit time stepping, and you can see that we have a time loop with subject duration which we compute the flux and, and other age. Um, it deploys the polytrending method and numerical damping in order to achieve faster convergence uh, every iteration. If it is of interest to you, you can find more information on the polytrending method in the paper that I noted here. Implicit global grid. Implicit global grid is designed for the main scientists. And experience has shown that it really works well also for domain scientist students. It, it is quite easy and accessible to them. It renders the distributed polarization of sample by GPU and CPU applications on a regular stagger grid nearly trivial. It relies on MPI.jl, CUDA.jl, and AMD CPU.jl and supports CUDA and ROC and MPI. Moreover, it is uh, completely seamlessly interoperable with MPI.jl 
and of course also with, with many other packages, um, also with Star Wars part of Pencil. Now, when I talk about implicit domain composition, what do I mean? Um, you can see here uh, basically the idea. On the left we have the global grid, and on the right we have a decomposed grid. Uh, typically, people rather first define a global grid and then uh, decompose that. We do it just the other way around. We define the local grid, and then by uh, the amount of processes that we launch implicitly, we define the global grid. And so this means that the code that we write describes what we, how we solve the local problem. It describes what we do on one CPU or one CPU. The extensions of the global grid are implicitly given by the extension of the local grid, which you see here in yellow, and then the number of CPUs or CPUs that we use in each dimension. So here, two by two. Now let me show you how we can apply um, implicit global grid to the glacier flow. Um, that way we can make it multi CPU or multi CPU. So we start with initializing the global grid, the function in global grid. Um, we pass it the size of the local grid, and x and y, and then the size of the global grid is retrieved by an x g and y g. Then, uh, in the main part of the code, here in the, in the, in the sub iteration, the time loop, we add update halo. The very end, we add final global grid, and that's all. Note that we have introduced here, which is of the halo only point to point communication uh, at every iteration with neighboring processes. As noted earlier, implicit goal grid is designed for domain scientists, so there is no need for explicit allocation of send receive buffer or of stream or whatever. And implicit goal grid does automatically low level management of memory, true streams, rock and queues for efficient reuse throughout the application. And this it does completely hidden from the user. Implicit Global Grid is compatible with Power Sensor features to automatically hide communication and computation. It works as follows. It splits the computation into computations of a boundary region and computations of inner points. The, the boundary region uh, size can be defined with the arguments you see here, 32 in x dimension and 2 in y dimension. And uh, so after that, after we have defined uh, this split, um, the, the two regions are launched in two different streams. And this allows them to to launch the communication as soon as the boundary region has uh, completed. Here you can see the timeline of the communication computation routines of around the CUDA API on a single node with four uh, Tesla V100 CPUs. They are connected with NV Link, so it means super fast connection. Now, here we zoom in into three or let's say two and a half iterations, and you can see that the communication related routines in purple overlap the computation routines in green. Now, very important to see here, uh, or to, to, to note here, data transfer happens on non-blocking hybrid streams. Backhanded issue is streamlined in implicit global grid. Um, only low-level data transfer and memory stream queue management uh, needs to be implemented for every backend. So this allows us to super fast add new backends, and thanks to this, we could already add a backend for AMD. CPU. Results and conclusions. Now this is how this glacier simulation looks like when done at a high resolution on multiple CPUs. Here we see some uh, scaling results. The parallel efficiency of a Julia 3D photovista elastic two phase flow solver is given in yellow and the original CUDA C solver in blue. 
and we run it only up to 1024 CPUs uh, we do it so far and but you see we get more than 95 percent parallel efficiency uh, thanks a great part to spot essential high communication feature the it is still really good result for a 3d non-linear fusion solver and 3d viscoelastic stoke solver we have joined over 96 percent parallel efficiency when we tested it on uh, more than 2000 cpus it was a job that is not at all limited to earth science at the past 21 conference we presented our first multi-CPU solver with complex numbers it was a linear grossly task equation solver implemented with power central and the cube uh, we have many more multi-CPU application examples you can find them in the documentation of parallel stencil conclusion i'll keep the conclusion very short we showed that implicit solver responds to the three p's Thanks a lot for watching.